Hello, what's up everybody? How is it going? Welcome to another video of tutorial series, Learning Laravel from Scratch. I'm your host Anwar Ali and I'm here today with a new topic. And today we'll be dealing with uh, understanding the uh, project uh, structure of the Laravel and where different stuffs are uh, located inside our project. So this was the project that we set up yesterday. And here we need to understand few things. We have different folders, we have different files. And uh, if you uh, are not aware, I have set up a repository and I always make a push to the repository for all the changes I've done. So all of my changes are uh, in the Git repository. So the link to the repository will be there in the description below. You can follow up with that so that you don't miss any of the codes that we do. And if you are following the project through the Git, and you need to notice there are some git ignore uh, this is the file which is used to ignore some of the file that we don't want to push to the git because of its uh, let's say size for example <coughs> you can see different uh, folders here and that uh, that is not uh, uh, appropriate to push to the git and one of it is vendor vendor are the uh, list of the third party softwares and that we usually don't push in a git because it is really huge there are lots of folders and inside each folder there is uh, there, there are lots of files and subfolders so we don't usually push the vendor to the git and if you are using git in order to clone the system you will not get these folders and files inside your project now in order to get them what you need to do is uh, you need to just run composer update like we did last time after you make a pull or you clone the project you just need to run composer update uh, composer space update and you will get all these folders back you might not get few uh, files back like env file and env file is like uh, a file where we store lots of our uh, let's say values like values of app name so for currently my app name is laravel and uh, like database uh, values like like the mysql settings like what is the server name what is the host name port username password database name and maybe even the mail configurations and other other stuffs so all of our configurations are located inside dot env file we also call it environment variable because <coughs> actually dot env file is not appropriate to use in the live environment or production environment it is only used in development environment because so suppose it is inside our project right so yesterday and uh, let me just turn on my amps first of all AMP amps <coughs> let's try to browse the Laravel project that we created yesterday so localhost slash project so after the project if you just try to type dot env it will just display all everything that we want to and that is and uh, that is related to our server so my Username can be is displayed over here. My password is displayed over here. My connection, my IP is displayed over here. Everything um, that is confidential is displayed over here. So which can be really risky in a production environment. We don't want these values to be displayed in production environment. So dot env file in order to save our configurations is only for development environment. While whenever we are working in our local server but whenever we are working in live server we have a separate folder here that is known as app and not app config config and inside config we have app.php and if you see this app.php you will see everywhere it is it is using a function called env and what this function actually means is like uh, you can see the app name is there in dot env already okay so app name is here the app name is laravel so this function is saying the name of the application first of all it searches in dot env file okay so if the env function it stands for like search for the for this uh, value in env file and if you find the value use that value else if you don't find the, that value then use laravel by default similarly saying the env uh, the value of env is said to be the function env app env production so it is saying if you find the value of app env inside env then use the value of env file otherwise use production so since we have env file and we have these values set in env so it will uh, it will automatically use those values instead of using these values okay 
So if, if you go to see in database, similarly what we have is, it is saying, uh, in order to use MySQL setting, it is saying the driver is MySQL and the host, for the host, it is saying, if we find any value in env file, use that value or else use this value. Similarly, the port, if we find any port number mentioned in env file, then use that value or use this value. So what this generally means is, whenever we work in local environment, you can just set the values over here. For example, our host is localhost, my database, maybe I'll create a database called project, my username is root, and my password is my SQL. It could be blank in your case if you are using WAMP or ZAMP, right? So whenever it reaches this file, now it will check. It is saying, just search for DB host in env file. So it goes here and it finds for DB port or DB host in env file localhost. So it will not be using this file, rather it will be using DB host provided in env. So in my local environment, it, uh, if I just pass the values in .env file, it will work perfectly. But whenever I want to uh, publish this website uh, in, the, uh, in the live environment or in the real server, what I do is I generally remove this env file from this location. So whenever this function is called, it says search db host in env file, but it tries to search for env file and it is not located in live server, so it will automatically read this value. So what we generally do is for in production environment, we set our host, our port, our database, our username, our password in these values, okay? And in our local environment, we create an env file and store all those information in env file. So .env is for production environment and these files are for a live environment. or product, uh, These are for development environment and these are for production environment. So this was the basic thing. We don't need to worry much about other, uh, let's say, files. Currently, we need to know that our basic settings are stored inside app.php and my database uh, configurations are stored inside database.php. So uh, currently while working in local, you don't have to worry even about app.php and database.php. This is only once we have moved our server to, moved our files to the live server, we then have to make changes to these files by removing .env. But whenever you are working in local environment, you just have to make changes in this .env file and everything will work. So let us, Let's see a few more things. Okay, so here we have uh, made a few changes. So we have our database uh, values set to uh, database as project, username root, and password MySQL. So I need to create a database called project. So let me create uh, quickly create the uh, database called project. So go to database and make a folder called project i mean uh, database called project so we are ready to go i have already created the database called project so everything is, else is good so let us just close env file for now and git ignore for now now let us go to some of the importance folder one by one okay so if you go to app this is the place where we generally create our controller and model so everything that is out in just inside app like user.php these are our model laravel what it usually does is it automatically creates uh, the model user for us so that we don't have to create it recreate it again and this user is responsible for the admin purpose whenever we um, build our admin panel so uh, the admin will be using the login detail provided by user automatically which we will cover uh, later on uh, we will cover how to create models how to create tables using database we don't we will not be using php my admin anymore so this is just for once we uh, we just use the php my admin to create the database now we don't need php my admin anymore everything will be handling from the code itself and the console okay <clears throat> secondly if you see there is another folder known as http so HTTP is the folder where we create our controllers. So you can see there are a few folders. I, do, I, do, I want you to skip in the middleware for now. This is really important providers and middleware. They are important part of uh, Laravel, but for now you can just skip it. I will uh, cover about middleware and providers later on in future. For now, you can just go to the controllers and you will see this is the place where we create our controllers. So if you want to create our controller, you can create inside HTTP controllers. And if you want to create the model, you can create inside user. 
okay so this is the place where our controller and model is located inside app so controllers are located inside app http controllers and models are located just inside app folder like user.php okay similarly we have other files we covered the config and inside database you will see there are a few uh, folders uh, here we will be dealing with migrations a lot yeah there are seeds and seeds are like uh, uh, I will cover about it in future so migrations are some of the files like you, you can see there are some migrations called create users table and create password uh, reset table so these are the files that are responsible to create the uh, table so we will not be creating table from our PHP MyAdmin like we used to do before but rather we'll be creating migrations and we'll be running those migrations from our terminal and that will uh, do it so once we have created the migrations we will just run the migration through our command prompt and the tables will be automatically created in our admin panel which I'll demonstrate uh, later on and seeds are the values for those tables so if you want some default value because every time I create the table I don't want to insert values again and again so I want if I want some dummy content or some predefined values in my tables that I can create seeds for those tables so I can create seed for users table I can create seeds for companies I can create seeds for news and th those will be like dummy values that will be inserted into table whenever we run the migration and the seeds okay besides that we have a public folder so public folder is the main folder where our laravel website should point to there's an index.php this will be uh, communicating with the controllers and uh, stuffs in order to load our uh, uh, load our views and load our website to uh, um, in the browser so this is the main file that is responsible to uh, do everything furthermore uh, we generally store our CSS files JS files or images inside our public so if you want to uh, use such comp uh, components which are used in all the places like our CSS file JS files we generally store inside public but if you want to upload something to the site for example we have a backend and we want to upload the, ima uh, uh, the images of the news in that case instead of using public we generally use storage so if you are in some other environment uh, than windows then you have to change the permission of storage to uh, writable permission so you you want to give the right permission to this folder so that images are able to upload so this is the folder we generally use to uh, upload our files and images uh, so public is the place where we store our JS and CSS and storage is the place where we upload our files like images and other files okay besides that we have a folder called resources and this is the folder that is responsible for our views so all of our views is, is, is uh, located inside the views folder inside resources so we'll be creating our views uh, in our in our resources folder uh, and inside views folder so if you see we can see the extension of all the views are welcome is the name of the file dot blade dot php so blade is a type of template engine which is uh, used by the laravel in order to make our task much simplified so blade template uh, uh, is a kind of template that provides an alternate to make our code uh, or make our writing of code much faster for example if you want to echo something you can see this is equivalent to echo in blade template so this is exactly equivalent to php echo app get locale okay so this is exactly equivalent to this so whenever you want to echo something in using blade template you can just write this much of code and you don't have to bother about opening php closing php so this is very user friendly to client side application so you don't have to worry much about when to start php when to close php whenever you want to print something you can just write the php code inside this folder and this is specifically for printing you don't you can't write like if else condition this way there's a separate way to write uh, conditions and for loops in blade template but in order to display something or print something you need to use these curly brackets 
and this will be responsible for printing something similarly if you go down you will see that in order to write some if condition you can just start the if by at the rate if and the rest of the things are just like php and you don't have to write the quotes whenever wherever you want to end the if you can just write end if see so the bracket of the if starts after this line and ends in this line so here the brackets are denoted by at the rate if means starting of the bracket curly bracket and at the rate end if means ending of the curly bracket so this denotes the if the scope of this if is starting from here and ending till here okay so similarly and there are lots of functions and lots of stuffs that we can discuss uh, day by day regarding blade template so this is how actually and the blade template works so this is a view that was provided by laravel to us uh, so if you see whenever we start our project localhost slash project slash public this is the laravel file and you can see that a view is being loaded and if you if you want to see how this view is being loaded so all of the urls of the laravel is controlled by the routes file so if you go to app you know, inside routes and web.php this is the file which is equivalent to code igniter's route okay so inside routes there is a web.php which is responsible for routing of website there are other uh, other routes like api.php and it is used to create apis and there uh, and i will explain about the reason why we have two different uh, routes api.php and web.php in laravel 5.6 in earlier version we only had one route file but here we have multiple routes file and i will explain about it uh, why this is so so the the way of writing a route is almost similar so we just need to understand the syntax so this exactly actually is saying whenever there is nothing in the url this means whenever i'm in the root folder that is inside public folder this should return a view that is known as welcome so it goes inside the view folder inside resources and search for the welcome.blade.php which is this so what this is doing is this route is saying the default uh, if there is nothing in the URL that is, means if you are in the public folder it will automatically load the view welcome and the welcome is generating this design so this was the basic about the structure of Laravel and from tomorrow we will be dealing some more advanced stuffs and we will be starting with uh, let's say a database design we will be planning a project I will come with a new plan a new project and we will be completing that project using Laravel, a simple crude operation project with the front end and back end with login operations, session handling, add, add, edit, delete, uploading images, pagination, search, all those stuffs we'll be covering using Laravel. We'll come with a plan tomorrow. We'll uh, um, plan our database. We'll create the migrations for the tables and we'll be running those migration. We'll be creating models, controllers and views for those operations. And I will show you from tomorrow how easy is it to build a project and databases and controllers models and views using laravel as we'll be dealing all most of those things using our terminal instead of writing the codes hope you guys liked the video and you understood the video so there was nothing much it was just introduction to the structure of laravel and i hope you are guys are now familiar with the structure of the laravel and the more you uh, dig into it the more you'll understand so in future classes you'll be more clear about the structure of the laravel and the most amazing thing about laravel it, it, it is like it provides us frequent updates so we can just uh, use more and more features of the laravel and it is really easy to upgrade our existing project to the newer version of laravel so we'll discuss all those things in coming classes i hope you liked the video you enjoyed the video and if you did and don't forget to like subscribe and comment to the videos i'll see you guys tomorrow with the new topic till then have a nice time have a nice day goodbye